Hello. In my previous video about the empire of experts, I expressed my opinion that we are becoming too subservient to a small group of experts and we are losing confidence in our own instincts and common sense. In this video, I'm going to take a scientific look at the advice of one particular group who have had a significant effect upon our lives over recent years. And I'm going to concentrate on one aspect of their advice, what they did not tell us. In the UK, everyone will remember these regular COVID press conferences, with Prime Minister Boris Johnson in the middle, and the Chief Medical Officer Chris Whitty on the right, and the Chief Scientific Advisor to the Government Patrick Vallance on the left of the picture. SARS-CoV-2 was spreading and causing fear and alarm. Unprecedented measures were called for, and lockdowns were introduced. As it says on each plinth, we had to stay home to save lives. Mr Johnson assured us he was following the science. But he was following the science as given to him by Witty, Valance and the SAGE committee that Witty and Valance had selected. Staying home and not mixing with other people was supposed to limit the spread of the virus. The virus was killing people, but far more people were surviving it than dying. So how exactly did it kill people? You may remember the term a cytokine storm. There are a lot of academic papers written about it, and these are titles of just four of them. Cytokines are small proteins which act as messengers between cells. There are lots of different types, but during an infection they would message and stimulate the immune cells in the blood to seek out and destroy the invading bacteria or virus. The fight against a pathogen involves a variety of processes collectively known as inflammation. When those cytokines are overproduced, it is referred to as a cytokine storm, and they overstimulate the immune response, increasing inflammation, and those killer cells start to attack everything, including healthy cells, leading to death in some circumstances. So an excessive immune response with too much inflammation was the major problem with COVID-19. As I said, lockdowns were introduced in the hope of stopping the spread of COVID. How does it feel to be told to stay at home and not mix with other people because there is an invisible killer on the loose? How does it feel to be reminded of how many people have died on the news every day? How does it feel to be separated from your friends and family how does it feel to worry about your business going bust or the business you work for going bust because it has been forced to close? For almost everybody, all of these things are extremely stressful. As the draconian measures became more apparent, I just felt that this wasn't right. In the past, we used to quarantine people who were ill, but we'd never previously quarantined millions of people who were not ill. This triggered my instincts to think there was something wrong here. So I did an internet search for stress and immunity, and it didn't take long for me to find this gentleman, Dr. Sheldon Cohen, who is a professor in the Department of Psychology at the Carnegie Mellon University in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. He's the head of the Laboratory for the Study of Stress, Immunity and Disease. Over the last 20 years, he has studied the effects of psychological stress, social support and social status on immunity and susceptibility to infectious disease. As far back as April 2012, Professor Cohen published a paper entitled How Stress Influences Disease. Study Reveals Inflammation as the Culprit. A research team led by Carnegie Mellon University's Sheldon Cohen has found that chronic psychological stress is associated with the body losing its ability to regulate the inflammatory response. Cohen argued that prolonged stress alters the effectiveness of the hormone cortisol to regulate inflammation because it decreases tissue sensitivity. Specifically, immune cells become insensitive to cortisol's regulatory effect. In turn, runaway inflammation through the overproduction of inflammatory cytokines promotes the development and progression of disease. 
That information has been known for many years. But when lockdowns were introduced by various countries, Professor Cohen produced a, another written warning, which was entitled Psychosocial Vulnerabilities to Upper Respiratory Infectious Illness Implications for Susceptibility to Coronavirus Disease 2019, COVID-19. For 35 years, our laboratory has been involved in identifying psychosocial factors that predict who becomes ill when they are exposed to a virus affecting the upper respiratory tract. Factors we found to be associated with greater risk of respiratory illnesses after virus exposure included smoking, ingesting an inadequate level of vitamin C, and chronic psychological stress. Factors associated with decreased risk included social integration, social support, physical activity, adequate and efficient sleep, and moderate alcohol intake. We suggest that our findings could have implications for identifying who becomes ill when exposed to severe acute respiratory syndrome coronavirus. Professor Cohen goes on to explain exactly what he means by social integration. Cohen says, social integration refers to the degree to which an individual participates in a broad range of social relationships and is generally defined in terms of the number of social roles one plays. For instance, spouse, parent, friend, fellow employee, volunteer, club member. Social integration has been found to predict lesser mortality as well as lower risk for cardiovascular disease onset and disease progression. These associations are thought to occur because social integration tends to boost positive psychological states that have beneficial effects on a range of disease-relevant physiological pathways. In contrast, a particularly low level of integration is viewed as social isolation, which is experienced as a stressful event. What did lockdowns do? They put us through a great deal of prolonged psychological stress and they caused social isolation. They were very specific that we needed social isolation. We were not allowed to go to work. We were not allowed to mix with other people. It's as if they were trying to make us stressed and isolated. In fact, that's exactly what they were doing. This is a quote from a paper prepared for the Scientific Advisory Group for Emergencies, SAGE. A substantial number of people still do not feel sufficiently personally threatened. The perceived level of personal threat needs to be increased among those who are complacent using hard-hitting emotional messaging. They deliberately pushed and pushed the fear, thinking that would keep you separated from other people and not spread the disease. Apparently, they know nothing about Sheldon Cohen's work, even though it's been available and well publicised for years, and it took me 15 minutes to find it on the internet. What sort of experts are these experts? What else didn't they tell us? I don't remember Witty and Valence telling us that it was predominantly old people who were dying, and it was having almost no effect on youngsters, as this chart clearly shows. I also don't remember them telling us that 95% of the people dying from COVID also had comorbidities. Comorbidities are pre-existing metabolic problems like obesity, type 2 diabetes, cancer, heart disease. This chart is from the fairly early days of December 2020 and total deaths from COVID were 45,466. Of those people 43,555 had pre-existing metabolic problems and only 1,911 did not or were not known to. So why do people with metabolic problems have such difficulty with COVID-19? It's because those metabolic diseases and obesity cause an increase in inflammation. This paper from Mexico published in 2017 low-grade inflammation and its relation to obesity and chronic degenerative diseases. Obesity causes low-grade chronic inflammation. Adipose tissue, that's fat tissue, 
in addition to its function of storing energy reserves in the form of triglycerides, has important functions as an endocrine organ, producing a variety of molecules called adipocytokines. As I've discussed in other videos, too much sugar in the diet causes weight gain, and that excessive fat leads to systemic inflammation. So if you already have inflammation throughout your body when you catch COVID, you're more likely to suffer a worse disease than someone without that type of comorbidity. But there is another problem for people with metabolic diseases caused by a high carbohydrate diet. It is called glycation. Glycation is the bonding of a sugar molecule to a protein or lipid molecule. We all have glucose circulating in our blood. Some of that glucose sticks itself to other molecules in the blood where it isn't wanted. The higher your blood glucose level, as in type 2 diabetes, the more glucose molecules there are in the blood and the more glucose molecules are going to stick to something else. Sometimes glucose bonds to the immune cells. Glycation interferes with natural killer cell function. Natural killer cells have to be able to recognize a pathogen or virus to be able to kill it. If their surface has too many glucose molecules bonded to it, they cannot recognize a danger. And if they cannot see it, they cannot kill it. Too much sugar in the blood leads to increased inflammation and decreased immune response. That combination is, is a major reason why people with comorbidities struggle so badly with COVID-19. We were told that COVID is the biggest health threat we face. But no, it is not. Metabolic syndrome is the biggest health threat and has been for decades. In September 2020, which was at the end of the summer, and COVID, like other respiratory viruses, is a seasonal virus, far worse in the winter than the summer. But these are typical causes of death per day in the UK in September 2020. As usual, heart disease and cancer are the two biggest. All the other things come third, but Alzheimer's disease, stroke, diabetes are far, far bigger causes of death than COVID. Heart disease, cancer, Alzheimer's, stroke, diabetes are all part of metabolic syndrome. These diseases are the biggest health problem facing the UK and if you suffer from these metabolic problems you are also in far more danger from COVID-19. An enormous amount of money, time and effort was put into fighting the virus. The only solution our chief medical officer and our chief scientific advisor could come up with was to wait for a vaccine and then vaccinate everybody. Imagine if they had put the same amount of money, time and effort into solving metabolic syndrome. They would have improved the health and lives of millions of people. They would have protected the NHS from being overrun and greatly reduced the number of people dying from COVID. But I have never heard either of our two chief experts recommend any solutions to diet-induced metabolic disease. To recap, Boris Johnson told us he was following the advice of his experts when he insisted on lockdowns. But the science shows that fear and isolation make all of us more susceptible to infection. The science also shows that the inflammation and glycation that accompany metabolic disease can make COVID worse. Witty and Valence are experts in something. But I, for one, cannot believe they are experts in improving the health of this nation. If you find my videos interesting, please subscribe to the channel. I hope to speak to you again soon, and in the meantime, I wish you good health.